grace. But when you develop the basic necessities of life, and that will make many of you realize that you are not living in poverty as well. Because you have a roof over your head. You have change of food. You have food for the day. You are not poor. You have the basic necessities of God. If you don't have seventy-five dollars in the bank this month, or if you have to get rid of my church, or if you have it in somewhere else, you are among the world's top eight richest first. If you have seventy-five dollars. You are in the world's top eight percent. That is to tell you that ninety-two percent of this world is in dire poverty. So we look at it. It ranges from mild to severe. We can experience poverty on many levels. Christ came to save us in every sense of what it means to be saved. The Greek word sozo means to be made whole. That's what it means to be saved. To be made whole. Not just the salvation you get saved and go to heaven. That's just one part of it. The rest of it is God heals your whole life. The whole man, body, spirit, and soul. To be set free. To be made sound. To be made peaceful. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 Paul says, for all the ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And to everyone that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For it is the power of God to make everyone Oh, hallelujah. Amen. To make everyone oh. To make you walk. As one who is rich. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, So by grace are we saved through faith. And that way of yourselves it is the gift of God. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us and made us own by the washing of regeneration and the meaning of the Holy Ghost. Was Jesus true? Not right. He got when he was born. But all the same came from the east and they brought 20 cents, gold, and myrrh. He worked with his father's business. Many people supported his ministry. He had no place to live his head. In the sense that he never had time to settle down. He only had three years to travel 2,000 miles by foot. He was working hard, preaching the gospel. He traveled about. Paul says that Jesus Christ became poor so that we might become rich. That means that one time, Jesus was not poor. 
but we became poor that we might become rich. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then we were rich, yet for your sakes we became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Christ descended from heaven and he emptied himself. But made himself a poor reputation. Took up, took up on himself the form of a self servant and was made in the likeness of men. And we found in the pattern of the man, he humbled himself and became a queen of the death, king of the death of the cross. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Everything on earth compared to heaven is silver. Everything on earth compared to heaven is silver. You have nothing that you can compare to the riches of heaven. Nothing. Your eyes have not seen, neither have ear heard, what Christ has set in reserve for those who love him. Wherever and throughout Jesus died, he didn't love him, or put emphasis on him. Jesus said publicly, will always be in the world. Try as we separate them well. Try as they wait well. Try as hard as they can. Jesus says the poor you will always have with you. We said it in John chapter 12, verses 8 to 9. For the poor always we have with you, but we we have not always. Not to for the Jews, therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus, say only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Then says, God shows the poor to be rich in pay in chapter 2, verse 5. But what does, but what does not mean, what does not mean, what does not mean this morning that we need to be here to be saved? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that we need to be fair. It means that those who were suffering economically were so rich in faith. God wants us to live an abundant life every day. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 7 says, Being enriched in everything through our bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Biblical ethics on wealth will change the economic situation of any society. So that causes us to think. In what ways does Jesus free us from the spirit of poverty? Jesus delivered them to us. A remedy from the situation. He delivered us from spiritual poverty. Sin makes us spiritually bankrupt. Romans chapter 4. Father Luke chapter 12 says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, 
seek from my Father that we may be bound with inheritance with me. And Jesus asked him, who said there is a judge over you? You go and figure that out by yourself. And what amazes is when Jesus turned to his disciples after that and he said to them, be careful of the spirit of covetousness. Because Jesus saw covetousness in the heart of the man who asked him to be buried his father's estate. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, the church in Smyrna was a poor church, but it was rich. In Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 17, the church of Laodicea was rich in earthly wealth, but it was poor spiritual. True of heavenly riches are the only last in the world. True heavenly riches are the only lasting wealth. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 20, lay not up for yourselves treasures of the earth where not and rust don't corrupt and where thieves break through and seal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. We are the not nor less that corrupt, and we are thieves do not break through or see. And verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I said that I listened to a lady who paid me for some money. And she said how she was respected as she entered the bank and everybody wanted to uh, agree with her. But all of a sudden, her life is filled with fear. Her life is filled with fear. Riches and fears so that fear. We have the unsearchable riches of Christ. And we are blessed. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Be perfect. Saved by grace. How in favor of God. Hallelujah. Be perfect. Saved by grace. How in favor of God. When somebody tells you good morning, just say, How in perfect. Saved by grace. How in favor of God. Hallelujah! 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 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 says unto me, who am less than the least of these saints, all things is this great sinner that I should preach among the Gentiles. We are search of the riches of Christ. We are ears of God and join ears with Jesus Christ. That's which my friend. What about your face? He can say that he will accept Jesus Christ. I am joined here with the King of Kings, with the Prince of all Princes, with the Lord of the Lords. I have an inheritance in heaven. I'm rich. I'm just waiting for our hope to come in. I was waiting. For my boat to come in. Hallelujah! Jesus promises us a life of blessing. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 
33 he says, but see who first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these sins shall be added unto you. So if you know God, God, I don't know if Christians believe this. What do the Christians believe this? You know what we have so much day here? We live too many days ahead. I feel like this morning that I can't tell anything because I saw a lot of advertising that it will be you just so many. And you have so many goals. You can soon go out of the sky. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things shall be added unto you. Your success is not to be blamed for anyone else's pain. I don't think you can do this because you are success. No success is not to be blamed for anyone else's pain. Don't feel guilty for being blessed. But learn to receive so that others can be blessed. Amen? Learn to see so that others can be blessed. We need a parent's life. When that avoids all excesses. And this is what God calls some pet men. Luke chapter 30, verses 7 to 9 says. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. And they are removed far from me by the and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food from thee for me. Lest I be full and deny thee. And so do with the Lord. Or lest I be fair and see and take the name of my God in vain. Two things please God do not keep from me. Vanity and lies. And don't give me poverty or riches. Keep me balanced so I can focus on. Keep me balanced so I can focus on. Um, chapter 6, verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which one of some committed after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money. So I don't think we have to church this morning. The way that money can solve their problem. And they can't take a day to be in church. They are chasing the American dream. The one day they're going to wake up. Because the dream is only a longer dream is only one minute long. The longest dream, you're in a dream sometimes and it feels like you've traveled the world in a dream. But the longest dream is only 60 seconds long. You don't know it all. Find out if you're willing to agree. Avoid 
accept cities. But who offers this up powerfully? This is what we have. The true opposite of poverty is the Buddha, not accepting that. When Jesus promised that on the day return in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 and 19, or 29 to 30, we, we were not referring to a simple financial multiplication of everything we are offering. To me. Rather, when you become his disciple, you are going to become full of comfort. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you will have found the deliverance that God sent through Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Because that is true, Father God. Everywhere you travel in the world, you are a part of the family of God. You have a brother or a sister right now in China. You have a brother and a sister in Australia. You have a brother and a sister in Africa. You have a brother and a sister in Nigeria, somewhere in the world. That you don't know this now. Newfoundland, Iceland, you have brothers and sisters. You have them. Somewhere in the world, because it's with God, and you say, I'm a Christian. Somebody's going to put you up. Somebody's going to put you up. When I say I'm going to South Africa, I say, Lord, I don't know anybody in South Africa. So I told him, I said, the first thing we do when we go to South Africa, find that church. Amen. Find that church. Find that church. I went to this church and it was so wonderful. The priest asked so well coming. That's so well coming. The pastor has asked me to give you his name and his telephone number. That's so well coming. We found brothers and sisters in the world. When the Christian comes and we share all things, when we have in the Atlanta Journal Constitution or a seminar with a chapter that says, Jesus wants to help. But that language can be excessive and not give it up. And it tends to make people overly materialistic. That phrase can be interpreted in many ways. God wants us to be rich in faith, hope, and love. God wants us to be rich in faith, hope, and love. God's resources are not limited to economic conditions. He promises to provide for us. No matter what happens in the economy, it works with countries to the law, and the people start jumping out of the British again, God will provide for you. Genesis 22, 14. And everyone who called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is written to be saved in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah 
your time. God sees your mouth that me with more. God sees what you are in need of with more. He has not closed his eyes to what you need with more. In Genesis 26, 12, the eyes are sold in that land. And you see him in the same year and hundredfold, and the Lord bless him. Psalm 37, verse 25 says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor be seen begging bread. Philippians. Chapter 4, verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You hear the testimonies of people who have grown up in families that were abusive, who have used drugs. Who think the person left their children to the children care people who distribute them all over child services, take them from home to home. And they go from place to place, but some of them have become successful. The pastor was one of them. And he said that they were moved from home to home, he joined the military. And he received Christ as his Savior. And one day he read God said to him that if he can trust in him, he will never be poor. He would be rich, but he will have everything he needed. It shocked him because. He was willing to do it in God's secret. And I've never seen a head of a servant of poverty. But to do what God told him to do immediately. And the servant of poverty entered into his life and then his family that day. He later got married. Entered the ministry and has lived the full best life ever since. Riches does not only come in the monetary value. God does not count blessing and prosperity as how some people count it. God has prospered you. All you have to do is look back to where you're coming from. And look to where you are today. Then you know that God has prospered you. God has prospered you. God has prospered you. You are prosperous. You are rich. Jesus followed the light of the Lord. Generosity is the key to breaking the spirit of poverty. Generosity is the key to breaking the spirit of prosperity. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says, The little old soul shall be made back. The little old soul shall be made back, and he that walk there shall be water or so be sad. Where God says in verse 26, he that will be overcome, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that shall have him. When you're selfish, there is nothing much for you with that. 
come and finish the last sort of bad life in hand. How much of you have done to it? But as a pastor who served several extremely poor villages, was confronted by the Holy Spirit. That he was not teaching the truth of all of God's truth. We had better to teach them about tithing. But these people are so poor, we have to do with God. They have nothing to do with it. Teach them anyway. The Lord sees the purpose of his heart that he must teach the people tithing. So the pastor did. He slowly took them through the scriptures, explaining God's plan of tithing. The next Sunday after he preached it, the people arrived with their tithes. Chickens, fruits, vegetables, eggs, leather books, and all kinds of handmade articles. The pastor sold some of the goods and he used the money for the work of the church. He gave some of the gifts to the best to do for the village and he kept some for his own life to run. That he was only praying. Sunday after Sunday, the people went. A severe drought swept through that air. But miraculously, the crops of the church members who had tied it continued to flower. Their fields were green and lush. There are those in the surrounding areas with their hair. Some of their crops, they tied up the money they received from the cross. The money they tied and they gave them to build a bigger church. The congregation grew. God blessed them immensely because of it. People could look at them and say, you are blessed of God. You are blessed of God. But their blessing came because of great generosity. Obedience brings blessing. I would not be preaching this today if God didn't want me to hear. What you do with it is up to you. So you can either obey and be blessed. Or disobey. My wife said to me this morning, you know when she said to me on Facebook all the time? I said, you are rebellious. You are rebellious at the spot. Not in the past, but at the spot. You are rebellious. Because as long as you go to the same, you can't give God one over. Say to the The law of sowing and reaping works regardless of your circumstances. The law of sowing and reaping works, says it's not wrong. Regardless of photography, regardless of your service. Don't eat the seed. So it's God will be your progress.
We thank you for guiding us through the world. And we thank you, Lord, that your word guides us all the way. It's right to our feet. It's right to our path. And God, if we walk in your word, we can never be lost. So bless this congregation because we come to these celebrations. And thank God that everything that you have given unto us, we will glorify your name when you say, We take us home to us now. Take us home safe. And give us peace in our hearts to pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. The closing name is 499. 499. Please have to let me see. That's right. I will sing the one good soul. I'm the Christ who died in the world. Four ninety times I will be done.